Last week on the 10th, 10th of December, the University of Cape Town officially installed its sixth Chancellor, Dr. Precious Moloi Mozibe, she's committed to use her time to open up opportunities to young people. She joins us now via Zoom. A very good morning and thanks for making the time, Chancellor. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning to you. Congratulations are in order. Now, all round, you've received congratulatory messages, including from the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame. Uh, through the Mozipa Foundation and your fashion interests, you are no stranger to big impact projects. Uh, but are you already feeling the weight of this new responsibility? Thank you so much uh, for your kind message. I am feeling the excitement. I am... Um, very optimistic, optimistic, very hopeful, but at the same time, I'm also very realistic of um, the conditions that we find ourselves as a university, as well as, uh, as a country. Massive unemployment and uh, lots of our students not in education and not in any employment. So these are issues that um, as chancellor, uh, in, in, in collaboration with other chancellors of universities as well as um, uh, the University of Cape Town uh, we are really trying hard to make sure that we focus on uh, the future of our youth uh, in South Africa and on the continent. One of those co conditions at the university is that it's a woman-led institution uh, and sometimes uh, there has been strife. Well, how important is stakeholder management for you at this time? Um, thank you. You pointed out that uh, the university currently has three women leading it, and I'm very excited about that. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor Mamukheti Pakeng, our Chairman of Council, Bab uh, Baba Loa, uh, is also the three women leading the university. This is important to show as leaders that our transformation is an imperative and it has to be cascaded along all levels of, 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 the universe, of university life. We also want to encourage this level of transformation within companies and within communities. To come to the stakeholder management issue, at my installation, we had actually made sure that we invite various stakeholders, including our traditional leaders, kings and queens, religious organizations, academia, uh, and ordinary citizens, young people were also included. This is important because as a university, we have to ensure that uh, we are a center of knowledge, but we are embedded within our society. And it is important for us, and this is something that I, uh, together with other chancellors are driving. It is important for us to make sure that our communities, our stakeholders understand the, the, the value that the university has uh, for our overall well-being, the ownership of the university has to, they, they have to feel that they, they own universities, including knowledge that comes from there and the students that we develop at these centers of higher learning. So in this age of digital advancement, what is the value of a good education, uh, especially in social mobility, and how do you hope to position the university to be up to the task? Um, I think what is important, uh, there's few trends that I mentioned in my installation, and you have mentioned inclusion is very important. We must make sure that all students, including those coming from poor communities, are able to access these excellent uh, centers of higher education. Secondly, we have to make sure that our students are trained in fourth industrial revolution technology skills that will enable them to be employable or to start their own businesses. I am very passionate about ensuring that uh, we educate our, our students in, in data analytics, in, in uh, digital marketing, uh, in ensuring that we respond to the needs of current um, uh, labor and markets, but we're also very visionary and start to think about how we as a, a university, as a country and as a continent can start to leapfrog fourth industrial revolution technologies, uh, ensure that we can 
lead um, uh, in this century as Africans, particularly because we have a very good advantage in our youth demographics. It's essentially a, a strategic as opposed to an operational responsibility uh, with a greater emphasis on fundraising. Now, just in terms of national issues, we have an economy that's struggling to get off the ground. Uh, we can't underestimate how challenging this particular uh, responsibility will be. Uh, how, how, how do you hope to, to uh, um, keep the institution financially sustainable? I think it's important uh, to note that all uh, universities, centers of higher education are going through a major change. Uh, sustainability is critical. Financial sustainability, as well as um, you know, sustainability of the learnings that we bring into this uh, into higher education. Uh, in terms of uh, financial uh, sustainability, we are appealing to business um, to ensure that they play a part in educating the type of labor that they will need in their businesses. So it's an investment in, in, in the labor market uh, uh, through businesses. We're also in, uh, encouraging uh, philanthropists and foundations to also do the same. My family foundation, the Motepe Foundation, has been contributing towards education uh, for, for young students. Uh, since 1999, we have been uh, contributing towards education. I believe that we also need to work with government, with private sector, and with the community in large, and really focus on investing in the right type of education that we want uh, for our children to ensure that our future as a country and as a continent um, is that of uh, uh, leadership. Now, talking about that right type of education, I want to ask you, is the South African education system uh, preparing our young people for the work of the future? Um, uh, sadly, I would have to say that um, we, we are seeing more and more young people that are coming out of uh, universities who do not have the skills that the labor market requires. So there is a huge skills mismatch. Um, and what is needed is that we need to start, to, and this is not just about South Africa, globally, uh, the, the education system is really ripe for major transformation. We are entering this fourth industrial revolution um, era, and yet we're still training um, our students uh, for, 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 for work of the past, you know, which is not relevant to where we are going. We have seen more and more how a lot of people have, you know, are, are going into e-commerce. Uh, we need more people in those areas. Uh, digital marketing has become very, very important. Artificial intelligence is uh, an area that is growing in South Africa and on the continent. We need young people that are going into the STEM fields, that is the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, we need to ensure that our children from an early age also understand um, you know, uh, coding. I have a young social entrepreneur uh, who has started a, a company, Lindy Wamakladi, has started a company that trains young girls how to code. This is critically important because that is where the future of work is going. And, and we need to encourage all our young people to have some digital skills because they will not uh, survive uh, in the future of work without these basic skills. I'm sure you have long term plans, but in the short term, as we speak in the next month, uh, uh, educational uh, institutions open once again to allow students in into a new year. And there are a myriad of issues to look at, including uh, applications and ensuring that everyone is in the system and accepting uh, students from poor environments. What are your short term, especially in relation to the reopening of, of ed universities in January? What are your short term plans? What we had done um, together with the University of Cape Town um, over the past uh, you know, year was to ensure that students who are not able to graduate because they still owe fees um, are able to graduate. Um, 
I was able to contribute towards uh, 50 students who could not graduate at the university and um, uh, we managed to pay the balance of their fees. But the university together with our alumni, uh, uh, other philanthropists and uh, business was able to pay 1.4 billion uh, to ensure that we can reduce student debt. That is uh, one of the biggest issues at universities that we face um, with, with more and more students not being able to complete their degrees uh, because of student debt. And then, of course, you mentioned an important issue. Um, as we end the year, early in January, students have to apply to come to university. And again, we're going to see issues around um, finance where students are not able to pay their fees. So I think um, this speaks very, very importantly to the issue of inclusion, which uh, the University of Cape Town and other universities around South Africa are looking at seriously. Um, that is how we build an, in, uh, an, an inclusive environment at universities where students coming from poorer families uh, feel welcome um, uh, to, to, to come and study at, um, at, at these um, uh, centers of institution. Dr. Mutepe, we're supposed to wrap up our interview, but just a quick one. How are you going to be recognizing the issue of the missing middle, those students who are considered to be well off but aren't really? Just a quick one on this one. Well, from um, I'll, I'll give you two examples. From my perspective, from our family foundation perspective, we have expanded, um, you know, to include students who are previously uh, seen as coming from the, uh, you know, missing middle, uh, to, to ensure that we they are not left out. So we we encouraging more and more of those students to apply for bursaries, and we're offering them bursaries. And universities within their tight budgets have to prioritize academic merit. And they have to, uh, you know, prioritize um, uh, a financial need. So that is um, a function of the university executive to decide on. And um, I, I can only support them in ensuring that uh, we become more inclusive. Of course, there's a lot to speak about, but time doesn't allow. Thank you so much for making the time this morning. And uh, we'll be watching to see how things unfold at the University of Cape Town. Thank you so much.